This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi. And I have to introduce my guest today by saying I'm absolutely delighted to have this man on the show because I think I kind of half fell in love with him the day that we met, which was in my girlfriend's backyard. He was the next door neighbor. He and his wife had just moved to town and were found this piece of property as a rental property. And he painted the house turquoise with a bright yellow garage door and it's like the wildest thing in the neighborhood and I was like oh my gosh I love it and I thought I wonder how this neighborhood is gonna love it but anyway then pretty soon Leo and Polly came stumbling over to to say howdy and uh, and here we are so this is uh, Leo Sheeran welcome thank you so much Linda it's a pleasure to be here with you today mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm really excited that you are going to be this is your first year on the Art Harvest Studio tour, which is coming up quick. Two weeks from Friday. I know, it's the, the, so the last weekend in September and then the first full weekend in October. So does it start, is it the 30th? It starts the 30th, Okay. So the, then one, two, and then seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. so I think there's 50 artists on the tour this year? Biggest ever. I mean, my gosh, that's crazy. And you're located in McMinnville, I'm right on City Park downtown, right? So, so I have a beautiful location. I can walk across the street and go for a hot soak or go to the library. So yeah, he's easy to find. If you know where the pool is, boom, there, there he is. So let's talk about you and maybe a little bit about your background and, and kind of the work that you, that you do now. Sure. My background, ooh, boy. You started out a long time ago. Part of it's a dark past, you know. Okay, well, uh, yeah. We, we, we just, That's uh, behind the paywall. Okay. <laughs> Skip over to bumpy parts. Uh, right. Oh, geez. My partner, Polly, and I, we've been married. Today's actually our anniversary. Oh, my gosh. Happy anniversary. Today is 44. Wow. That's incredible. It Wonderful. Is, it, it really is. It's, it's an accomplishment that I don't take lightly because no. I know the work that went into it. You know, it's not all bed of roses. You know that. Absolutely. And she's a fabulous woman, oh, too. Oh, she is. I'm very blessed. You really are. I'm so so let, but let's talk about the art because we don't have a whole art. lot of time. Okay. And you, you said you knew from so the time you were a little boy that you were going to be an artist. I've, I've always been an artist. I've been a sensitive, uh, you know, a sensitive kid is like, oh, wow, I love picture books. What is it that I love about picture books is flipping the the pages and looking at the stories. You know, mm -hmm. I love story, I love pictures, mm -hmm. I love illustration. And then um, as an adult, when I, um, so one of my favorite books as a kid was called Crow Boy. It was a Japanese author mm -hmm. about this lost and lonely little child mm -hmm. that was teased mercilessly. I so identified with this kid because I used to climb trees and talk to the crows, the, the crows. Oh, really? As a kid. Wow. So, uh, I was in teacher training. Okay, fast forward, a bunch of years later, I was a psychiatric technician in state hospitals. I said, whoa, very heavy duty work. Can't do this long. Was this like in Napa? In, in Napa State and Sonoma <laughs> State Hospitals. Okay. It was heavy duty. Yeah. It was like, no, ah, wow, I can't do that for long term. No. It's just really difficult. Down. Yeah. So I said, well, okay, I became, I went to teacher training, got my teacher credential. I already had my bachelor's. I had doing some art. I had actually been taking a lot of art classes and painting classes, and it's you know keep that passion alive. Sure, right? Keep the passion alive. On the East Coast, where I grew up at UMass, uh, down in California at uh, uh, State College, Santa Rosa Junior College, and whatnot. Mm, okay. But I'm in teacher training, and uh, I'm taking children's lit class. Oh, how fun! I, I, children's lit. I go. Oh my God, there's that book, Crow Boy. I remember that when I was a kid. And, you know, and this is like, this, how that passes on. Like you know? it, the full circle. Full circle. Oh, from, that's amazing. From the lonely little kid mm -hmm. that the teacher got. One teacher finally got him because he drew and he drew. No one was like, they mm -hmm. made fun of him. He drew and he drew. But the, this teacher, one teacher, Mr. Sobe, put his drawings up on the wall and says, hang back after class. I want to talk to you and get to know you. Chibi, the little boy. And I said, whoa, now that's me. Now I'm Mr. Sobe, and that's my role now. And then I started teaching kindergarten, and uh, it was beautiful, you know? And it's like, of course. Oh, my God. Uh, Maury Sendak, one of my heroes, right, as, as an illustrator, and uh, got to meet him. That's incredible. Yeah. I, I love it. 
So you really did get to like be a mentor and, and impact Absolutely. the lives of children who maybe have been a lot like you, or when you were that age, yeah. that the empathy factor came in and it probably made uh, some of your sh struggles uh, all, you know, seem more worthwhile. Totally worthwhile, yeah. totally worthwhile yeah. when you reach some of those kids. Yeah. I actually had a kid that was, I remember from early teaching days, uh, autistic kid that the mom knew me already. I had been teaching a few years. The, mm -hmm. mom, the mom knew me of my reputation that, oh, he's really good with these difficult kids, right? mm -hmm. difficult. Right. right. So she said, well, I want him in the class. So he wrote me a letter, high school graduation. We're talking, what, 12 years later, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. said, Mr. Ed, which I went by Ed at that time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ed, you were one of the best teachers. You were the best teacher I had in 12 years. Wow. Please come to my high school graduation. Oh, my gosh. Without you, I don't know if I'd be here. See? At this point. Wow. That's like complete validation. You know, you don't yep. hear from a lot of students. No. But when you hear from one like that. But, so but really, you know what? You, you know, I don't think any of us actually really know what our life is supposed to be about. But there's times when it becomes very clear. You know, that, that little boy who grew up to be the high school graduate, who knows what he's doing now, but you really touched him. So that's one. Mm -hmm. And there's countless others that you don't know about. But you were saying that you taught internationally? Yes. So I okay. went on, I went on, you know, I was, and I was doing, when I was in kindergarten, a lot of art. It was like a three-ring circus. <laughs> okay. I mean, I had, I, I did uh, Maurice Sendak murals on the walls, you know, mm -hmm. because just, it was where the wild things are, uh -huh. right? That was my idea of kindergarten. And uh, anyways, that's how I got to meet Maurice. Anyways, I won an award. It was uh, through the NEA, National Education Association. Mm -hmm. They sent me to Washington. You're getting an award for early literacy development. I, I met uh, LeVar Burton. Oh, really? Also, yeah, LeVar cool. that did Reading Rainbow. Yes, of course. He got an award for Reading Rainbow. I was there. Anyways, after that, like that launched me into like, you can go international, man. And so I did. My wife and I, my wife was a teacher by the time, by that time, and we taught around the world for 20 years. It's incredible. All different countries. Drug the kids with you, obviously. Yeah, um, our two kids. Grew up they everywhere. were in school. They grew up. They graduated high school in Southeast Asia. That's and amazing. Really rich experience. Really rich wow. experience because you get to experience so many different cultures, so many different languages, and you're immersed in it. Mm -hmm. You're living there for a period of years. We were in Southeast Asia for nine years. Wow. And then, uh, oh, just traveled to a number of places: India, Japan, Middle East, South America. Africa. So you absorb all these different cultures and, and impressions they, um, and colors and styles that you, I'm sure, wind up being integrated into your own work. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I transitioned into teaching art full time mm -hmm. overseas because it was, you know, it was an option. It was available. Mm -hmm. Elementary and middle school art that I taught. Okay. But I was teaching all media. So it was, I was like I'm absorbing all these amazing art traditions in India, the, their, their artistic traditions, in Japan, theirs. And, uh, the mask making tradition in in uh, Africa and in Bali. It's like all these incredible cultures and it's informing my practice, of sure. course. And then I'm sharing that with the kids and we're doing incredible stuff together. Mm -hmm. So that was hugely impactful in my own growth as an artist, spiritually as well, mm -hmm. you know. It was your own little eat, pray, love before, before that ever came around. Mm -hmm. easy, right? <laughs> yeah, Liz Gilbert, I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. She has one of the best TED Talks. One of my favorite. I've heard it. I like you it too, heard, yes. Yeah, on mm -hmm. inspiration, mm -hmm. right? After she came out with that, I said, what do I do now? It's like, yeah. my best work's behind me. No, you keep going, hon. You yeah. just keep going. You're a writer, you keep going. You're an artist, you keep going. And, and, it, and to some degree, I think when somebody has you know a book like that that comes out and you think, that's all I have. But no, that was the tip of the iceberg. That just broke the seal, so to speak. And now everything else that wants to come through can come through once you got that out of the way. So Amen. maybe. And, and then yeah. my art practice has been like that. You know, like when I was in Singapore, saying, w w great art colleagues are saying, hey, we should do a show. Because we're doing kids' shows every year, mm -hmm. you know, and we're putting on their work. And then found a colleague that was a photographer in the high school. Said, 
Paul, you want to do a show together? I got a gallery space. Wow. And it was like so exciting. We had a wonderful show. And then we, I did it again we, you know, in Singapore. And then in Africa, did a street show with an African artist with, that I met through a, a colleague at school that where I taught that he was, he was a photographer, my buddy, Patrick, that had done a, actually a booklet on this Ghanaian artist. He says, you got to meet my friend Franklin. <laughs> you guys will hit it off. Yeah, and of course we did, and we did a show together. I love it. Marvelous. marvelous. You know, it's so interesting to, to think that, you know, a person could pass you on the street, and here you are in McMinnville, Oregon, where a many, 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 many incredible and amazing people live, but you would have no idea of, you know, the depth and the breadth of your experience, and here you are. So you wound up in McMinnville, which is interesting, and, and, and now you're going to do the Art Harvest Studio Tour, which is great, and people are going to get a chance to meet mm -hmm. you and see your work. So, you know, what, what kind of, since we don't have images, people can go to your, your website that you, that's at the, on the screen, but what is the, you know, what do you do? Are you very eclectic or? I am very eclectic. Okay, so. You know, I Mixed draw, media? I use primarily a painter and mask maker. Okay. Printmaking as also Fig oh, collage work. Okay. okay. There's a collage up there. Uh, so I do a lot of collage work. Mm -hmm. I'm also a faci trained facilitator in a process called soul collage, which an art therapist started in California. I had an art therapist friend. She said, oh, you know what, Leo, you would like this process because you do collage in your work. So I said, oh, really? So she's doing workshops, soul collage workshops. I said, really, Katerina? I'll do it. You know, I'll try it. You know, one summer when I was home visiting. And, uh, oh, of course, instantly fell in love with it. So then trained as a facilitator so I can offer workshops in it. And uh, oh, That's great. And it's, it's soul work mm -hmm. that's for me and me alone, but it also informs my work. And that's basically my work is my spiritual journey informs my artistic practice and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know. They, they just go hand in glove like that. Well, I cannot wait to come visit your, your studio on the tour. And so let's go back over those dates one more time. Okay, it starts Friday, September 30, two mm -hmm. weeks from this Friday, and then October 1 and 2, and then the following weekend for three days, mm -hmm. 7, 8, 9 of October. Perfect, and people can go to the Art Harvest Studio Tour website. Yes. And tickets, I mean, it's the buttons, you get the button. You get a button for 10 bucks, gets you, you know, well, 50, 50 plus artists this year, biggest mm -hmm. ever. There's also a preview at the Land and Sea Gallery right downtown here. Okay. Uh, I'll have a couple pieces in that because it's like Andy mm -hmm. Kerr that runs that yeah. gallery <laughs> has opened up his space. He's also in the Art Harvest, but he's opened up his space to, uh, we can have a little preview of some of our works as well as. Uh, Shehalem uh, Cultural Center. Right. There's going to be a few works up there as well. Uh, yeah, I think, okay, perfect. Well, we d we're almost out of time, so I really want to wish you all the success in the world. I think, I actually think this tour is going to be, you know, over the top huge because of the pent up demand. You know, two years with no tour. It's two years of people feeling cooped up, and I mm -hmm. want to have a life again. Exactly, you know, and get out and, and have fun. Excite so. and do some exciting things. This is going to be a great opportunity. Well, this is your last big, uh, I guess, your last big push on it. So, best wishes, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank Linda. you.